Hello and welcome to Thaik. Today we are going to discuss about the new and returning customers, how we can extract it from the sales data in Power BI. I have made a separate project on the sales analytics. If you haven't seen that, just click on the link given on the description because you will get a clear picture of how we need to build the dashboard. So coming back to this subject and before to that, if you haven't subscribed up or if you have visiting first time to my channel, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button if you like this video. So coming back here, let's go to Power BI. Okay, cool. So I have this report and the left side is the new customers and the right side is the returning customers is based on the order date which we have selected on the slicer. So basically what it means is the period which I have selected for an example the 12th June 2011 to 17th Jan 2013 during this period how many customers newly come and purchase the thing and how many of them is already purchased and they are returning it back again to purchase our goods. So in that case the number of returning customers should be much more than the new customers because it means the customer is satisfying with us our product and services so that only they are coming back to our location and store they are purchasing things and going it back so in order to get that done so what i have done i have just added the first name and last name from the customer column which is here team customer and first name and last name and then it's the sales so far sales so far is nothing but just a calculation so let me open up that okay so sales so far so this is actually a calculate a sum of sales amount excluding all the dim date because whatever the date i have selected here right so it will remove all the things and it will give me all the sales for that particular customer that's it about the sales so far and then the first thing is we need to extract the first order date from the customer if you have the data available in your database then that's good enough you can directly use that same information if you don't have that information then how we can extract this you can extract it using a DAX measure it's basically you need to write the first order date I have given a name and then the calculate minimum of fact internet sales that's order date excluding all the dim date filtration so whatever the filtration we have I'm going to remove on the date here so by doing that we are going to get all the first order information by each customer so this is the customer Aaron Allen so he purchased first on 2011 so during this period right okay so here this customer for example the Brandy Gill he has purchased the first on 29th Jan but if you look at this one order date I have filtered from June itself so that's the reason he comes under the returning customer so now the main part starts so we have seen first last from customers this is just the sum and this is the minimum of first order date and then the sales this period so this is the one which I need to calculate which is comes under sales this period Sales this period is just nothing but sales this period is just nothing but a sum of sales amount. A sum of sales amount is also just the sum of sales amount. So now where the main picture comes is you need to create a measure which I have called as the customer status. So this is the one which is the calculation. So don't worry about this calculation, it's simple and easy. So let's begin one by one. So first of all, I am declaring a variable first order date. So just now we have seen the first order date which is the minimum of the customer order excluding all the dates. So and then I have taken again one more variable which is the sales so far. It's actually the sales so far is nothing but a sum of all the purchases from the customer. Okay, And then I am also adding a separate variable to get the capture of minimum sales selected date and maximum selected date which is the slicer which we have in this place right okay so by doing that we get the first order date the sales so far minimum selected date and maximum selected date so and then we need to use this status 
So I'm going to use a switch function if the result is true. So the calculation is true. So what I'm doing is we need to add a logical thing. I um, mean expression is true and we need to add the value and then the result. So what I'm adding it here if the first date which is this one is greater than or equal to minimum selected date and the first order date is less than or equal to maximum order date. So for an example, I have selected the six months range, right? So if it is in between this period, then if it is true, then I need to mention that these are all are the new customers, right? Because the date I have selected here and they are purchasing during that period means they are the new customers. And again, I'm adding one more conditions to this. If the first start date is less than the maximum selected date. So I'm just using the maximum date here. If it's equal to true and the sales amount during that period is greater than or equal to zero. Because what is actually I'm doing it here is, so for an example, I have selected the January 2013 as a maximum date. So since the beginning of the data which we have and till the January 13, 2013, Till that time, if some customer has purchased, then it is going to come under returning customers. If some customers has bought beyond 2013, that date which you have selected, then they will not come under these conditions. Because we have selected a date range till January 2013, so it will filter only to that stage. That's the use of maximum date less than or equal to the first order date less than or equal to maximum selected date. And also the sales amount should be greater than zero. Okay, and now I'm returning it to be the status. The status should be new or returning. So, and then what I have done, I have just selected, added all these columns and then selected this one and use the filter pane and drag and drop the customer status into this filter on this visual option. And in contents, I just used new for this one. And here, I just use the same thing, but the text is returning. So that's why these two tables are being filtered now. The new customers and returning customers. Now, if you don't like this way and if you want to keep two buttons like I have it here, new and returning customers. And whenever you click on any of this button, then you have to see the data. In that case, you can use the bookmark options like we'll do right now. So the date is okay. So we can create these two. Let's go to view and open the selection pane and also the bookmark. Okay, so these two are the buttons. The good practice is to give it a name. So I'm just giving double clicking here. So button, button new. And this is button return. Okay, and this is a table. This is for TBL, this is for return. And this is, I think, the slicer. Slicer and this table is for new. Okay, now arranging this everything. So now we have button, two buttons and two tables in order. So let's, the buttons, I'm not going to hide that. So just the table. So I'm going to hide the new table. And let's keep everything. So select all these things because and then add a new bookmark give it a name this should be return because i am just enabling the return table so i am using this one now and clicking on here use the selected visuals instead of all visuals and then the data display and current page i am just taking out the current page now i have made a separate video on the bookmarks in power bi please go and check out that video given on the link link in the description below. So selecting these two options and then click on update. Click on one more time just to make sure and then click add one more. Give it a name. Double click this one and new and now reverse the selection. So I'm just hiding that table instead of this and then selecting all the four things, two buttons, two tables, clicking on this three dot icon and use the selected visuals and click here and update. Click here and update. Now if you click on return it give you return. If you click on new, it will give you this one. 
So let's arrange a bit here. So selecting this table and clicking on here and style sorry so this should be the general right so i'm going to change the x position of this one to be 200 just for an example 300 so let it click uh, return now and also change this position to be 300 okay now let's move this a bit now let me hide all these things and just open the format button so in the button select the button and at the bottom of the screen go to action expand that one and instead of type you have to use the bookmark and in the bookmark you have to select which you have just created so here this is for the new so i'm selecting this new now and then select the return button go back again enable action open this one select the bookmark and the bookmark should be written okay now clicking on here this is the new clicking on here this is the old one so if you are not sure about that so what you can do just enable this filter pen just to make sure this is for the returning one and enable the title of this table so this should be table return returning customers you can change the headings and everything okay so these are the returning customers and if i click on new i have a separate thing so enabling this everything again this for new customers and change the color to black center align and it should be 15 okay now if you click on returning it gives you a returning customers and if you click on new it gives you new customers so this is how it can be done now if you want to just make the highlight of these two buttons i have made a separate video on that how you can enable the buttons to show active and inactive buttons in power bi and i'm going to add that video link also in the description of this video please go and check out that as well if you like this video just click on the big thumbs up button if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications but make sure you turn on the notification on your devices share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any queries and feedback just post it in the comment section below thanks for watching keep learning see you in the next video